So straight, straight into the board. Now I have done a preview on this board if you would like a better look around the board. But as we are calling this a review, we will go straight in and have a look around. Two eight pins in the top left hand corner. Couple of CPU uh, cooler headers up here. This one's a CPU fan, this one's actually a pump fan. It should run at 100%. Great for high speed fans if you just want something really easy to connect to if you're overclocking. Uh, but also really good for an AIO that still uses a pump header. Another fan header here, Corsair header. Then you've got some uh, LEDs here to let you know what is going on with the uh, post readout. Then when we go a little bit further down, you've got a vertical USB 3 and then you've got USB 3.2 Gen 2. Below all of that, as you come down, you can see at the side six SATAs. Then you do have a couple of M.2s uh, down here. There's another one underneath and they all connect into the chipset. Then above it, you have this one. This one is the one that connects directly into the CPU and will utilize uh, PCR Express 5 if you should put a PCR Express 5 solid state drive in there. These are both uh, PCR Express 5 connectors. This one at the bottom is actually PCR Express 3 and that goes into the chipset as well. Down along the bottom of the board as I try and get it to balance are some fan headers again. So we have one there, one there, one there and one there. So four along the bottom in total. Then you have uh, two, uh, three in the top right hand corner in total and there is another one just nestled here which is in, I suppose it's good for the back case fan but I still think it's in a messy spot. It'd almost be better up there with the eight pins. But anyway, decent layout board. I personally don't think there's enough carbon. The fact that it's only here and on the IO at the top, I think is a little bit of a letdown. I'd like to have seen the carbon continued on with the other bits, bearing in mind that is the name. It's probably got something to do with the fact that that's easily or easier printed. When we do look round the back though, to the IO pre-fitted, and you do have a good selection of uh, outs there, USB 2, great for mouse and keyboards, USB 3s over here, USB C down the bottom, 2.5 gig Ethernet, because obviously that's on the chipset now. Uh, you do get HDMI and a display port. Don't forget that works on the CPU though. So that's if you're using onboard graphics. If you put a graphics card into your system, a dedicated one, you want to make sure that you put your uh, uh, connectors into that directly because that will be where the performance comes from. Now, as you'll probably see, I have whittled through this quite quickly, mainly because time has been of the essence and I actually spent more time testing them and then the videos ended up getting done very, very late. But the first thing I'll bring up is the power usage. Now the power usage, it being low could be seen as being good, but at the same time it being low also rings alarm bells for me because it normally means about performance because we've done stock results in the tests, which if they use more power, it means it's letting the CPU use more power. It might hold boost consistently longer and that will mean your average clock speed comes up, which means the average performance comes up. The carbon has been in the lower part of the graphs throughout the testing. One of the things I'll also say as well is I did find some instabilities at certain points when using Sandra, and it did get a bit shaky. I personally think all of those things are down to early BIOS. And I genuinely, genuinely think that once this has had a revision or two on the BIOS, everything will be fine. The carbons are strong boards, MSI, know what they're doing. I do think that it will come back up. Now I've also tested it with the i9. I think that the carbon territory, either you're saving money and going i9, or I personally think that an i6 is probably going to be better suited in this. The only other thing that I would say is it's obviously DDR5. And I would suggest around this price point, I'm hoping MSI are going to bring in a, a DDR4 board just like this and if they do and they're listening i would very much like to uh, test it i did say to msi about the uh, issues with the bios so they are aware and i know what the uh, bios team with them are like they will get on this and get it sorted really quick i do think 
it's just what they're going to do is it's going to use a little bit more power which will help keep the boost higher for longer because just because it says it can do 5.1 uh, if you keep the intel power restraints on too harsh then it's not going to boost like the other brands are quite clearly doing the asus ones are even seeing with them on auto still seeing like 5.2 gigahertz because they're not hemmed in to the stock intel power usage so that's kind of something to uh, keep in mind you can definitely tune this at home really nice and easily nice big heat sinks on it it's going to do the job whether you put the i9 or an i5 in it the only thing that's really going to sort of see is you know how much money you end up spending on your ddr5 don't forget about your uh, layout for your uh, nvmes though Top one will be the quickest one, but that will also be the one that you really want to be putting your DDR5, sorry, PCI Express 5 solid state drive in if you ever end up getting them. The ones in the bottom all end up going through the chipset uh, though, so that's the way that's wired. If you do get one, you can look in the manual and grab the uh, block diagram for it as well. So it's done very well. It's not beat the pack, but it's one of the cheaper boards that I have had in. I've also explained about the BIOS and I've also explained my gut feeling that I think once they've kind of unhemmed and let it use a little bit more power, it will definitely perform that bit better. But other than that, the, the only negative thing that I've got to say is it was the warmest VRMs that I've tested. But if you look at the graph, they weren't exactly hot anyway. So it's nothing to worry about. It's just so far, it's the warmest one I've tested. But then again, we're not talking about the days when VRMs were like 90 and 100 degrees. This is still below 70, so it's done really well. But for now, with a very quick and brief review for the fact that I was still trying to get this out relatively close to launch and we haven't had a great deal of time. This has been Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out. And don't forget, you can like, subscribe, comment, People that got to the end get an internet cookie, so don't forget to tell me. And also go and check out all the other reviews that I've done for DDR4 versus DDR5, the i5 and the i9 dedicated review, and the other motherboard reviews like the Unify, which doesn't have RGB, which are already live on the channel. DTL out.